Mm -hmm. Hello world, my name is Maya Sundermeyer and I would like to uh, welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. The main purpose of my blogs right now is to talk about what it is like for me to live on the autism spectrum, to um, talking to others on the autism spectrum that are de dealing with a neurotypical that is being a pain in the butt. Um, but you know what? We have to live with them. So um, I like to give advice to you. And I also like to give advice to you neurotypicals. I mean, there are two types of two types. Number one, there's the there's the listener, the ones who are interested in educating themselves. And then two, the ones that um, that are absolute know-it-alls. They uh, they've read every single article and talk to every single top expert and they think they're 100% right when eh, they're 100% wrong. Uh, again, I, I uh, like to talk about what, is like, what it is like for me to live on the autism spectrum. Now, what you saw me just do was a form of stuttering slash echolalia. Now, echolalia is where I say something and I repeat it again. So, please do not panic. Anyway. I eventually would like to turn my blog series into a mini Good Morning America show for the YouTube world. I don't think I'll be as g big as uh, Good Morning America, but I know that I want a big enough audience and I know that I want to go live. And I would like to do Dragon Con and Comic Con and I'd like to go and speak with uh, top scientists at Emory University and Georgia State, Georgia Tech. Uh, possibly at yeah, the University of Georgia and uh, I also would like to go to the Georgia Aquarium and talk about their findings there in Zoo Atlanta and uh, go behind the scenes there and also talk with other types of nerds that like to build things like robots like on YouTube I saw one video of someone that had built a Wally -E, or, or a replica of Wally -E. Um, from the movie which came out in 2008 and uh, right now I'm going to talk about what it is like for me to live on the autism spectrum but I'm going this time I'm going to use a um, an allegory uh, so anyway over uh, memo uh, was it yeah Memorial Day weekend I uh, spent a, a lot of time at an anime convention and I spent a lot of time in the dealers room where they sold Japanese sodas now these Japanese sodas are called ramunes. They are uh, sodas. They are well. They are again. Don't excuse my communication, but ramunes are served in a weird-looking glass bottle, and instead of having a um, a twist-off top or some or a bottle opener to uh, get access to the soda, you have a special uh, device. And a marble, and what you do is you insert the the uh, device over the marble. You push down that marble, and you get the soda. So anyway, uh, as you guys uh, may guess, uh, the Japanese I have different types of flavors. They don't just have cola or strawberry or grape. They go all out on a lot of their things. And one flavor that that I've noticed before is a uh, teriyaki flavor. Now, mind you, I went to Anime Weekend Atlanta, uh, which usually takes place in the fall, what, two years ago, and uh, they had they had the same sodas. They saw, they were selling a ginseng, and they were selling a teriyaki flavored soda, and I, I uh, jumped back and I said, "Ooh, yuck!" And what I uh, decided to do this time was bite the bullet and give the teriyaki a try. So I convinced myself to buy the soda. I, uh, and I pushed down the marble, gained access to the soda, and started sipping. And what I had discovered was just because the uh, the bottle said it was teriyaki flavored, it didn't taste anything like a t like a teriyaki sauce that you put on your chicken when you do stir fries and when you want to grill your chicken, or even when you go to a Japanese steakhouse. No, it tasted like dun 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 butter pancakes. Pancakes and syrup, and I loved it. I thought it was the most interesting soda I'd ever tried, and um, it wasn't too sweet either. I th I thought it had a nice uh, n nice sense of flavor. So, the point I wanted to make with this video is that just because something looks a certain way, doesn't or 
or it has a label, it doesn't mean that it is going to be what the flavor isn't going to be what it says. And I think a lot of people who um, t tend to believe stereotypes or they've had experiences with with one thing and they they run into run thing with, with a label on it and they run back into the label with someone else they're automatically going to jump to conclusions but as you educate yourself and uh, you you know you decide to bite the bullet as uh, like I did with the soda you're going you know you're going to either you either freak out or you you're, you're going to discover hmm that wasn't what I had what I you know, what I had expected at all and uh, I mean, and that's exactly uh, my impression. And then, I mean, there are people that do the same with the thing with movies. They think, "Oh, I don't want to go to that movie based on this," and then they end up uh, getting forced to go to go see the movie. And then they discover, "Wow, that was way different than I expected it to be." And they discover that the movie's good. And they discover, they discover it, and they tell, uh, they recommend others to go see it. And um, that is what I uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to get you neurotypicals to do is like that bottle of soda get out there and get to know someone with autism and uh, forget about your past experiences forget about the stereotypes ask them what their goals are um, ask them what their hopes and dreams are and don't cut them down don't criticize them just let the other person talk because you I mean you may you may really like the person and you may discover that they're unique in their own way and, you may discover that that person might offer you something beneficial. So, until next time, I'm Maya Sundermeyer, and I'm signing off now. Bye.